Hi, it's Leanne from Studio LP Ceramics, and in this video, I'll show you some tips and tricks for using my curved potter's profile ribs. Although the tips will be useful for all of the profile ribs, this video is specifically using rib A, the egg one. The rib has a gentle bellied out curve, and the other side is a useful straight edge. I'll be throwing a mug form, a little trinket dish, and a wider bowl or like a hot chocolate style mug. Of the three curved profile ribs, I'd say rib A is my favorite to use as it's so versatile, but it can be a little tricky to get right. So I'd recommend starting with a stoneware clay unless you're really comfortable with porcelain, but my tips will focus on stoneware, which, which acts a little different to porcelain. For the larger mug forms, start with 350 grams of clay. Now I like a fairly thin walled piece, and as I use a tiled bat system, my mugs pop off the bats with flat bases, and it means I don't really have to trim them. This keeps me making efficiently and quickly, and I save trimming for my more expensive pieces. But if you would like to trim your mugs, keep in mind you'll need to start with more clay and leave more at the base than I do. One tip though is to use digital scales and measure your clay and weigh them accurately to the gram. Once you've decided how much clay works for you, for the type of form you're making, write it down and keep using that exact amount every time for that form. You'll start to get a muscle memory for how many poles it takes and how wide to make the form. But if the starting point is a little different, it means you'll never get them exactly accurate and consistent. I'm gonna keep this filmed at real time for you so you can see how quickly the ribs can help you form a piece. Here I've just um, centered and coned the clay a couple times and then formed my puck before I open it out. I like to keep the slip off my clay as much as possible so I continue to sponge off any excess slip on the clay and the bat as I go so the clay doesn't get too wet and overworked. I'll so I start to open the clay as you normally would. I'm gonna now measure the base here. After accurately weighing your clay, this is the next place you'll wanna measure so your pieces are all the same. Mine's about nine centimeters. Then I can start to pull the walls into a cylinder. I wouldn't pull it much taller than the rib height, which is 10.5 centimeters, that's just over four inches. If it gets too tall, then the top of the rib, at least with rib A, may cut into the cylinder because it kind of curves inwards, but you'll get a feel for it the more times you do it. And if you want something taller, you can leave excess weight and thickness in the top third of your pot, then you can pull and form that top after you've already created the belly with the rib. When pulling the walls, you'll want a decent thickness, thicker than you want the final piece. You'll need that extra excess clay in the belly of the cylinder because as you push it out into the rib, it stretches and thins. After I've made a cylinder I'm happy with, I'm going to check the height, about 10.5 centimeters. If I were making multiple of these in this session, I would pull down my potter's gauge and mark where the rim of the cylinder is so I know how tall and wide to throw them after this and it means I don't have to keep getting the ruler out. Now I'm just going to clean up the skirt of extra clay that remains in the bottom of the pot. There's plenty of tools you can use for this. I really like this sharp metal tool. You just want to take away any excess clay that's not needed in your final profile. It'll make it difficult to use the rib if there's excess clay at the bottom. So now it's time to start using the rib. I'm using rib A. These are a profile rib I designed. They're based on my own thrown pots and they're for sale on my website. There's a link below for a set of three. This one's an egg-shaped rib. It's the most versatile form, I think. The one side is a straight edge, which I always start with the cleanup of the cylinder. I just remove any excess slip and take away any of the exterior throwing lines so the clay can come into full contact with the rib as it bellies out. You can see my thumb from the inside hand meets the rib at the top outside. It creates like a little arch and it anchors the rib to the back and gives me extra control. I'm pushing down on the rib from the top so it doesn't wiggle about. And on pulls, I use my longest finger, my middle finger, so that the finger, that's the finger that's pushing against the rib from the inside. Now I'm gonna start by using the sharp bottom edge of the rib to cut away and into the clay as it meets the bat. It's usually a fair bit of excess clay here, so um, I keep pulling the rib away and wiping off the extra ribbon of clay. If you need to, give it a couple passes, but remember to enter and exit the clay slowly and consistently here so you don't knock it off center. Now it's time to start forming. So the hand that's inside the form should be wet. You don't want to risk snagging on dry clay here. The rib outside isn't going to move. It should be flat on the back and just hold it in place and don't let it wobble. And your thumb from the inside hand is anchored on the top of the rib. 
Your inside throwing figure now pushes gently against the clay until it hits the rib. It's just stretching the clay. It's important to follow the speed of your wheel here. If you hold your finger in one area too long, it'll stretch that out more than other areas and you'll end up with, at best, uneven walls and at worst, a flop. So concentrate on keeping your fingers moving with each spin of the wheel. Not so fast that you're missing spots and not so slow that you're going over them too much. After your first pass, keep cleaning off the slip from the rib. It may take a few passes to do the bottom, the middle, and then the top curve. I'll sometimes turn the rib and use the straight side to help me pull the top of the mug if I want more height. Or here, I'm just using it to clean up the rim. I like a stepped rim that feels nice to drink from, so I use the straight edge to hold the exterior while forming an upside down V with my finger on the inside of the rim. You can see how it goes from like a squared off edge to a V shape. It gives the illusion of a thinner mug too, instead of drinking from a heavy rounded thick vessel. So there's your finished mug. In less than five minutes, you've got a bellied form you can replicate over and over with rib A. I've just opened my clay and because this will be a bowl, I'm trying to show here that the corners are sloped inwards, not a square like you'd often make with a mug. This will help you get that bowl curve inside instead of a flat bottom. I think I still didn't do it that well in this video. I sometimes forget because I make mostly mugs, but if you want a nice inner curve, leave some clay in the corners. The exterior will be cut in with the bottom of the rib, so if you don't leave some clay here, it'll be too thin. I probably also should have measured here, like I said I did for the mugs. You do start to get a little bit of muscle memory, but measuring is key to get them consistent in the beginning. So then pull your balls up into a small cylinder. You don't want them to be too tall because this is a small trinket dish, remember, not a mug. And then we're gonna clear away any clay from the bottom using a metal tool as well. You don't want that skirt of clay, just like on the mug form. Now here I do remember to measure it, it's four centimeters tall, and this is where I would now set my throwing gauge if I was making multiples. With the rib, you trim away any excess clay on the bottom, giving that nice undercut, so you can really push that into the bottom of the pot, close to the inner opening. And sometimes if it gives you this like sort of ribbon of clay or excess clay, you can use another tool to clear it away. On mugs, I don't usually bother with as the rib will clear it, but on shorter or narrower forms, there's not as much time to let the wheel help you clear it. I'm just making sure that bottom of the cut of the dish is cut into, and if you look at my thumb, it's on the um, anchored on the top of the rib, and the rib is flat against the wheel head. I don't want it to move, so it's locked in place with both hands. My inner hand, the fingers did the pulling there. They're moved just by squeezing them into kind of a C to make my thumb. And just like mugs, I bevel the top of the pot gently. It's just an aesthetic choice for my pots. Um, it, it's just the way I like them to look. You can kind of see a there's an uh, air bubble on the inner side inner wall of this pot um, when I was throwing it I think it made it go off a little off balance but it's still a cute um, trinket bowl or you could use this as like a snack bowl I've also seen them used as the top of a wax burner.
Okay, last up is a wider mug or a bowl shape. This will sort of be a mix of the two previous forms. A wider base is opened up with a V and the walls to give that curved interior. I remember to measure this. I op When I opened it, it's 10 centimeters. And then into the first poles. A tip for any first poles is to shape this into a volcano shape. Um, it kind of keeps the clay under control. It makes it easier. Remember, when throw using these ribs, we're going to throw the walls a little thicker than we would um, the resulting pot, because as we stretch the clay into the curved form, it will thin the walls. So try to bring up as much clay from that bottom skirt as you can. It's really a good habit when throwing. You can kind of see that I um, put my finger right in on the, the bot where the clay meets the, the bat here, and just try and pull as much of that clay up as I can. And then um, whatever is left there, I just use that tool just like we have used on the other pots um, to give us a nice straight edge. And straight in with the rib to give us an undercut to start that curve. I waste no time on this one, straight into the curve with the first pull. Thumb is anchored on the top of the rib. The rib is flat on the wheel head, and I'm pushing the clay out to meet the rib. Sometimes it can take uh, more than one pass. So I'm just going to get the top stretched out. You're really just stretching the clay so that it stretches out to meet that rib. That one was easy. This could be like a larger cappuccino or a hot chocolate type mug, maybe like an ice cream bowl. I hope this has given you some help using your new ribs. Just experiment with the weight of clay that you use, the width of the base, and how far up the rib that you want to pull the clay. And I think there's loads of forms that you can make with these three ribs. I'd love to see what you do create. Please share and tag me over on Instagram at Studio LP Ceramics. And if you don't yet have a set of ribs and you'd like some, you can buy them via the link below.